Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. For VPK by Maharshi Ayurveda, I'm Valerie Brown, and this is the Keeping Your Summer Cool at Work, Rest, and Play webinar. So sunshine, humidity, hot days, muggy nights, how is your pitta holding up this summer? In this webinar, we'll discuss easy Ayurvedic strategies to beat the heat and to keep you cool all summer. Now, joining us today is a dynamic Ayurvedic duo, uh, Dr. Mark Toomey and Helen Toomey. Dr. Mark Toomey is the director at the Raj Ayurvedic uh, Health Spa, and Helen Toomey is a, is a Maharshi wellness consultant as well as a teacher of Transcendental Meditation. And if you've tuned in to past webinars, you probably recognize these two, so we're so grateful to have them back. Welcome, both of you. Well, thanks for having us, Val. Thank you, Val. <laughs> All right, so we are super excited. This is a heated topic, pun intended. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'd love to know what you have for us uh, as the temperature soar. How do we stay cool and stay balanced? Well, thanks, Val. Of course, everyone likes to keep their cool under all situations. But I'm going to start with a very obscure question. And I'm going to say, ask, what does the obliquity of the ecliptic have to do with my skin problems or my hot liver or my acidity? And that will seem very obscure to most people, but if you're an astronomical nerd like me, you'll understand it means that the axis of the Earth tilts every year, either away or to the sun. So the tilting of the Earth, 23.5 degrees to the sun, means there's more light and more energy and more heat coming to the Northern Hemisphere. And what we experience that is as dramatic change. So those of us who have to go through uh, the other way, that is the reverse of that, and go through a very cold, hard winter, we see these dramatic transformations taking place. As the Earth gets warmer, and the sun's light and rays warm up the Earth, and all these wonderful, magical, chemical transformations, such as photosynthesis take place, and then voila, out of the earth, life bursts into, into its blossoming. And what we call right now that blossoming is summer. And summer has its own unique environment. But it's always about transformation. And of course, part of that transformation is heat. And in our body, we're not separate from that. In the environment, it's what we call that aspect or dosha called pitta. And pitta is one of the three doshas that is, we call it the fiery element, the fire element. And the main quality of pitta or its actions is transformation. And so we have to say that we really don't notice that so much in our body unless we have a problem. But as my biological professor used to say, to human beings, life is a series of enzymatic reactions. So that is these complex series of chemical processes, these transformations that are taking daily that allow us to experience life. And so from an Ayurvedic perspective, we would call that Pitta. Pitta is the transformation that takes place daily that creates energy. So Pitta has certain aspects, or we call subsystems, and it allows to see how this fiery heat element allows for these changes to take place in our body. And so those five sections that govern pitta, such as the first one is called pacha pitta, and that is the pitta that governs digestion. So the digestion that takes place in your stomach and your small intestine. So we take in all this food, all that food. Last time we did the um, digestive series, I talked about the amounts of food that human beings consume in their life, just these enormous amounts of food going in this mouth and somehow being transformed into our body. And so that takes place in the digestion in the small intestine. The food is broken down and it's, a, it's converted into something that can be absorbed into the body. And then what happens, it goes to our liver and we call that Ranjak Pitta. So the liver is just a god in terms of what takes place in our digestive system. It does so many functions. And one of them is to create blood, to sort out a lot of chemicals, to detox. And so the liver is a very important part of the pitta aspect, the transformation aspect. Then another part of pitta has to do with transformation, and this is something we probably all experience readily, and that is our emotions. 
is called sarapitta. It literally translates as that which digests emotions. So emotions are very complex, very abstract things. We might line up 10 neuroscientists and ask each one of them, what is an emotion? And you get 10 different answers. And the reason is because it's so complex, many people don't understand the process. But we keep it very simple in Ayurveda. We take in information by the senses, and that becomes experienced as perception. And then part of that perception is, well, do we like this or not? Is it good for me or not? And so the essence of that that comes out is our emotions, happiness, sadness, anger, irritability, and they should always be balanced. Too much of certain one emotion or another can lead to an imbalance as well. So that pitta process has to be balanced so that we're always happy, for instance. That's something we always want. Another part of pitta where we might see problems that's very important is the eyes. It's called alocha pitta. And alocha actually also transforms means inner and outer vision. So the outer vision we know very carefully. Either we have good vision and we, and we don't or we wear glasses, but that outer vision is very important in terms of a sensory perception. It allows us to really enjoy the world and to move about. But what about inner vision? Inner vision means the perception of myself, that ability to see very clearly within myself and not just the small self that's caught up in the machinations of life, but that self that's connected to the universe. That's how the best quality of Alokcha Pitta. And the other part of Pitta has to do with the skin, Brajak. And that skin is the largest organ in the body. And of course, being the largest organ, sometimes we neglect it, but it has everything to do with touch, the transforming of that experience of feel and touch into something useful. But it also has to do with surface area. One of the reasons we have skin is we have this large surface area, and that is to help get rid of the excess heat created by the transformation of all those ingredients, those chemical reactions, a byproduct of that is heat. And if we didn't have that ability to get rid of that heat via the skin, we'd probably just self-combust one day. That's how much heat gets taken out of us. Mm -hmm. So skin is a really important part of this transformation process of pitta. And this is often when we see, we see a pitta imbalance. And by pitta imbalance, I mean the fiery element becomes too great. And that means we might then see things like in the digestion, uh, fiery, hot, burning digestion, very common. Acid reflux is a big problem in this country. We might see a hot liver, which affects the blood. We might see problems with our eyes. We might see problems with our emotions, such as too much heat, like irritability. We might see problems with our skin. So those are the, some of the problems we might see along that way. But it's because pitta is that transformational aspect in that respect. Mm -hmm. So there are certain qualities to people who have pitta more. Um, let's say a body type of pitta, and uh, Helen will be going into that, but that's in general how this strange term, obliquity of ecliptic, affects our, our body type because it has to do with creating summer, which creates heat, which creates more transformation, which really connects us to the universe because that heat, if it's not taken care of and balanced in a timely way, will affect all those aspects of our health. Mm. So is it correct to say that summer is the season of transformation then? <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully love. <laughs> and love. That sounds great. <laughs> okay. And Helen, what do you have for us? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to now give us some sort of indication of what pitta characteristics are like in balance in the physiology, the neurophysiology, and what they're like out of balance, which my husband has given such a great introduction, just so that our audience can say, oh, yes, I identify with that, and I identify with that. So firstly, pitta quality in the individual and a person in balance. I would say the first is a doer. It's someone who's dynamic. People like doing. Pitta people like doing. I don't think anything would be achieved in the world without that quality of pitta, that dynamism. They're people who are focused. They're people who are organised. They like to get the job done. They are people who are passionate. 
people that have a good, strong, good, strong digestion, good intellect, a sharp intellect. They're people that are, have great compassion. They're people who have a good energy level, uh, a good level of resilience, not as great as kapha. And also when they're in balance, they're able to have a good sound sleep all through the night, undisturbed, uninterrupted. And as I said, good energy level. They're also fun and mischievous. And we all need some more mischief and fun, don't we, Val? And I'm sure the audience will say, too many serious things. That's why I say to everybody, don't watch the news before you go to bed because you'll probably have nightmares. So fun. They're fun-loving, witty, and they're great speakers. Now, let's see about a pitta person out of balance. This is an imbalance in pitta. And then that dynamism becomes corrupted. When I say corrupted, it means that, as Mark said, they're in, unable to actually remove that excess pitta. So suddenly that dynamic person becomes a per perfectionist, becomes controlling, becomes irritable, uh, becomes um, absolutely and utterly uh, compelling. Everything must be done right now. As I said, very, very demanding. That person will also be overly time conscious. That person could be irritable. They would also possibly be angry. And we all know that fabulous expression, hangry. <laughs> Never get between a pitta, especially if the pitta's out of balance and uh, uh, the dining table. There could be other features there as well. Perhaps in this condition, there could be, as I said, sharpness in speech emotional imbalance, you know, really quick, like an emotional roller coaster ride, quick to flare up over seemingly nothing. And then, as Mark said, with skin, there could be a tendency towards sudden skin flushes, uh, overheating, really overheating, over perspiring. Maybe things also such as acne, there could be an acne breakout. And on the digestive scene, more heat in the digestive tract, maybe some acidity, maybe hyperacidity. Another key feature of this out of balance is that normally pitters who are in balance sleeping well will suddenly find that they're tossing and turning. There could be hot sweats, there could be night sweats. It could be something like waking up every 90 minutes with a feeling of perhaps um, sadness or jealousy or anger or something rather like that. Or it could be waking up between two and four in the morning, just waking bolt upright and feeling wide awake and not being unable uh, to sleep, which of course is absolutely devastating for anyone, but particularly Peter with their dynamic energy and the fact that they like to achieve. And last thing is the fact that with heat, <coughs> Not only do we warm, but also there's the principle of something melts, that, that liquefaction. So if pitta is really in balance, there could be a tendency for more looseness of stools or diarrhoea. It means we're not digesting, it's just liquefying. So these are just a few principles because we'd like to our, our beloved audience to get some feeling there and maybe identify with some of those particular characteristics. And even though that seems to be such a, a disparate list of um, imbalances, you think, oh, how are we ever going to get that back in balance? But with the wonderful knowledge of Maharishi Ayurveda, we can relatively easily and simply get back to balance with some wonderful dietary tips, some daily routine and lifestyle trips, tips, and, of course, some herbal recommendations because this is going to be easy and sweet and effortless. And on that note, over to my husband with the first very, very important dietary recommendations. Well, thank you, Helen. <laughs> well, thank you, darling. <laughs> of course, being a good pitta boy, I love to talk about food. 
because pitties <laughs> love to eat, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> and we'll eat anything if you put it in front of us. But we <laughs> don't do that in Ayurveda. You know, you see a lot around now people talk about food as medicine. But Ayurveda has been using that term for 5,000 years. There's an old saying, without good food, medicines of no use. With good food, there's no need of medicine. And so it's a very ancient way of using food to help create balance. So we can use food to help create balance in pitta season. And so that means we want to favor out of the taste. So in Ayurveda, we understand there are six tastes, sweet, sour, salty, pungent, bitter, and astringent. And we can use those tastes, those, those various tastes to create balance. So we would say that we want to favor more sweet, bitter, and astringent foods. And we're going to go through that today and make some recommendations and what we mean by that. So in terms of diet, um, Peter should eat regular. I mean, being a fiery principle, they need to eat. If they don't eat, as Hang Helen said, you get the, the hangriness developed. <laughs> so they should always have breakfast. They should always have lunch as their main meal. And a, and a lighter meal in the evening. Sometimes if the pitta is very strong, a small snack in the afternoon is very helpful. Now, pitta people will want to have more cooling foods this time of year because, of, as we said, it's a hot season. And so foods that they want to favor are cooling. Now, let's divide this up into certain subgroups and categories. So in terms of grains, the best grains for pitta to eat in summer uh, things like basmati rice, uh, barley, oats. Um, these are the type of grains that are very cooling. Wheat is also cooling. Mm -hmm. So those are the grains we want to favor more of. But because our digestion is also very important, so what we say in Ayurveda, it's not what you eat, but also how you eat, but most importantly, how you digest that food. Pitas tend to have a strong digestion, but for all of us, because of this hot summer, because the external environment is hot, the internal heat goes down, which means our digestive fire actually becomes lower in summer. So we should favor, let's say, less carbohydrates and more uh, vegetables and fruits. And the reason is because vegetables and fruits usually have more bitter and astringent and sweet properties, whereas the grains are a little more heavy and a little harder to digest. So those grains are good, I mentioned, but less of them. Now, vegetables are very important because they're mainly of bitter and astringent taste. So we often have a saying in Ayurveda, bitter for pitta. So <laughs> certain, lots of green leafy vegetables. You know, summer is a wonderful time for fruit and vegetables. So lots of green leafy vegetables like kale, chard, bok choy, arugula. These type of vegetables are very, 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 very good. Uh, cilantro. Lots of fresh cilantro is very good for pitta. Unless, of course, you're one of those unique people that has a gene that makes cilantro smell like sweaty socks. So for oh you, goodness. maybe not so much, all right? <laughs> but fortunately, for those of us who it smells very nectar, then lots of fresh cilantro is very good herb at this time of the year. So other, other herbs would be watery vegetables, I mean. So things like squashes are very good. You know, zucchinis, button squashes, pumpkin, char you know, those type of squashes that you get are very watery. They're very cooling for this time of the year. Um, things like asparagus, carrots, beets, corn. If you can get organic, fresh, sweet corn, it's very nice. Daikon is good for the um, for watery vegetable that's very good. Green beans, fennel. So all these sort of vegetables are very, very good for pitta and lots of them too. And then in terms of protein, protein is very important for pitta because it really helps build their muscles. They tend to burn up energy more, so they really need to sustain with good protein. But easy to digest protein this time of year would be different type of dals because dals are very astringent and they're very good for cooling pitta, but they're very good sources of protein. Things like mung dal, tor dal, chana dal, red lentils, these type of dals can be made into very delicious soups with nicer spices. Various type of oils like ghee and olive oil and coconut oil are very good for pitta this time of year, but again, use them sparingly because 
oils tend to be a little heavy. Ghee is often favored in Ayurveda for Pitta because A is it's cooling, but it's also very good for the Agni if you have a low Agni or digestive fire. Then uh, dairy products are also very sweet and they're very good for cooling Pitta. So things like milk and uh, lassi and different types of um, cheeses, fresh cheese is the best. <clears throat> and also spices, of course. Mm. To use spices, is, is to use them correctly, is very good for balancing pitta, very good for maintaining good digestion without aggravating the pitta. So we often use spices like uh, cardamom, coriander, fennel, cumin, ginger, turmeric. These are really good balancing spices to use with your food. And then, of course, stay away from hot spices. Uh, I often see people with pitta imbalances in my pra pra practice. And one of the first things I ask is, do you like hot, spicy food? And of course they go, oh yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, I say, and I say, well, wouldn't you think that would affect the skin ration you have or the, the burning in your tummy or the, the heat in your face and eyes? And they go, oh, really? <laughs> so I just say, spices are okay, but avoid the hot spices and have the cooling ones this time of year. And it really makes a big difference. So things like cayenne, chili, paprika, black pepper, mustard seeds, these are very heating spices that you sh really should be using minimally this time of year. And then, of course, um, once we get that food on the plate and we want to make it taste and look good and, 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 and be well presented because that's a very important part of the pitta aspect is to be enjoy the food, to smell the food, to savor the food. Very, very important. And there are also uh, drinks we can make. So because we have all these wonderful, fresh, sweet fruits, then we can make some nice cooling drinks out of that. So things like watermelon juice is very good for pitta. Coconut water, you can actually uh, have make a, a beautiful drink out of uh, cucumbers. Cucumbers are very cooling, but I would take the skin off the cucumber before you juice it. Uh, grape juice is very good for pitta, grapes in general. often. I suggest people soak raisins overnight and then drink that water and eat the raisins in the morning. That's a really cooling property. Um, pomegranates. Pomegranates in, in the Middle East are the king of fruits. And in Ayurveda, pomegranates are a really highly prized fruit for pitta. So you can either eat the pomegranate straight or you can juice it. Uh, but there are a lot of good uh, organic pomegranate juices available now. But look for the... Uh, fresh ones as opposed to the diluted ones or the reconstituted ones. So pomegranate can be used as a medicine in pitta. It's very good for the heart. So the goal of that, these is to help balance pitta in a way that we can enjoy our food, enjoy life and maintain balance. And as I said, it's a wonderful time of year for different types of fruits and vegetables. And we suggest pitta eat and eat heartily, but be very careful about, you know, not overdoing it. Pitta people tend to rush meals a bit because they get very hungry or hangry. So always eat mindfully, eat with awareness. And of course, our, our favorite fruits are around this time of year, grapes, melons, peaches, berries, blueberries. You know, it's just a wonderful time for pitta to maintain balance through food. And if you choose wisely, then health problems will not arise. So choose wisely, enjoy. And what we're going to do now is Helen's going to talk about certain other aspects of balancing pitta. Could I ask one question, Val, of my husband, just for the, for the audience? You know, one of the, the things that we always get at the Raj is the fact that people inevitably talk about, you know, that they just ought, want th think that, the healthiest thing in the world is to eat salad, raw salad. Mm. So I just wanted one comment about that, Mark, just about, do you understand, about digestion and all the list of fabulous foods that you've said, especially the vegetables. <coughs> and some people may just think, again, that they're going to be eating uh, raw vegetables all summer. And the second thing is, how many times have I seen people absolutely boiling hot and they'll have a huge glass of freezing cold water, and then they'll have all this iced cold food out of the refrigerator, and more and more and more and more ice, which seems to be an in, you know an invention really, 
that uh, America is, is um, shipped to the entire world. Could we just have your comment on that? Because it, obviously it affects our digestion. In other words, when you want to be refreshed, the go-to thing in America is have something freezing. <laughs> well, thank you for those questions, Helen. Those are great questions. <laughs> yes, our digestion is called Agni, which means the fire. And let's take an, an analogy. Uh, if we like camping, we often make campfires. And let's say we have a nice campfire at night and in the morning we get up in the morning and we have some embers, but it's a little cold and we want to build the campfire up. Let's, so let's say we don't know much about campfires and we think, well, I'm going to take these big heavy logs and put them on the campfire on these embers and all of a sudden I'm going to have a roaring campfire and I'm going to be warm. Well, anybody who knows anything about campfires know that that's not going to work because we have to build up the fire. We have to actually have a strong fire in order to burn those logs. So mm. in that sense, the analogy means that if we're putting heavy, cold foods on our digestive fire, we're basically going to put it out. So, for instance, if we're taking icy cold water, how many times have you been to a restaurant in America, the first thing they put on the table is this big glass of icy cold water. Sometimes the whole thing is 90% ice. Yeah. And we get some very strange looks traveling around America when they do that. We say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't drink that. Can you bring me some warm water? And, and people are like astounded. You want warm water? So that type of you know, process or that type of um, mistake really helps kill our digestive fire before we even start eating. So my suggestion is don't drink icy cold things. Even though summer we have that tendency, we go for the ice cream, we go for the icy cold drinks, it's okay occasionally, but if we do it all the time, it really affects our digestion because if you remember I said, digestion is not as strong in summer as it is in winter. And that doesn't mean you have to eat ice cream in winter either because we really don't want it then anyway. <laughs> and then the other thing is um, drinking warm water is very, very good for digestion or room temperature would be good for pitted people. Uh, even a little bit chilly sometimes if you have a real quality of strong agni. Mm. And salad, you know, it's a bit like the logs. Uh, raw food is very hard to digest. And I'm not saying never eat salad. You know, I'm someone who likes, you know, some lovely arugula with some cucumbers and, you know, that's really nice, but it shouldn't be a main part of your meal because, again, it comes back to that analogy, raw food is hard to digest and therefore you're just putting those big logs on the fire and putting it out. So the reason why we cook food is because it makes it more palatable, more digestible, easier for those transformation processes to create something that can be assimilated in the body to create us from. Okay, so Nothing. in that sense, I hope that answers the question, Helen. I'm, I'm glad you brought up, I'm glad you brought up ice cream too. Uh, Sorry, what did you say? I said I'm glad that you brought up ice cream because that's one thing that we think of in the summertime is ice cream. And, and you did say that dairy is sweet and can be appropriate for pitta, but... Is there a time of day that would be best if you want yeah, to have some ice cream? I'm going to answer this one. Okay. <laughs> the most ideal time, this is if, if you really have a strong digestion, yes, strong pit of digestion, then the ideal time to have a little ice cream, that's not 20 scoops, enough for a village or a town. It's later in the afternoon, who knows, around 4 p.m. and on a really hot day, a small amount of ice cream, and it shouldn't be after your food. See what I mean? It's separated. Late afternoon, round four, it's not going to disturb your dinner, early dinner at seven or whatever, and a really, really hot day and not a large amount. And that gives you a bit of time to digest it. But having freezing cold ice cream straight after a meal or in the evening or whatever is just a death knell, quite frankly, to the digestion. So I'm just going to go through daily routine and Mark has mentioned some of these <coughs> things and I know for our regular viewers that we mention daily routine so much but it's vital because of the fact as the, um, if we've got any people in our audience who love Aretha Franklin, her song Respect, <laughs> R-E-S-P-C-T, that's what health means to me and that's what we mean with Pitta, that's what we mean with nature. When we're 
experiencing these different seasons, we don't, we respect the season. We respect that our nature and nature's nature is one, those same governing principles. So we celebrate nature and we celebrate Pitta and therefore we really need a good daily routine. I'm going to start with the inevitable, the evening. Even before the day starts, the day begins the night before. Pitters need rest. We're dynamic. We're bumblebees always buzzing around. So a good night's sleep starts by being in bed before 10 p.m. So we get that good best start. Going to bed between before 10 p.m., allows us to be in kapha period, it means that we're going to have heavier, more settled sleep. Then, wake up early in the morning, ideally before six, having had a good night's sleep, and then training ourselves if we have been going to, to bed late, this is what we need to do before 10, wake up before six, which will be still in vata time, and this is a perfect time for good elimination. It's also, if we've had a good sleep, then it's that time of the day of great energy and we can take that great quality of energy right through the day and that quality of lightness. If we wake up after six, we're going more into kapha time. We could find there'll be a little bit more heaviness. And most importantly, if we wake up earlier, before six, there'll be more tendency to have good elimination. We want to eliminate any of the heat within the physiology and obviously any toxins. Very, very important, which we've got more likelihood to do if we've had that good sleep and wake up early in the morning. As Marcus said, Pitta needs to have three meals a day according to your appetite, but a cooked breakfast, that's what we prefer. And then main meal of the day, uh, after breakfast, uh, I apologise. So I should go back and say that transcendental meditation, after we've had our elimination in the morning, transcendental meditation is absolutely imperative. Why? Because of the fact that all imbalance and all disease is the cause of something called pragyaparad. What does that mean? It means the mistaken intellect. It's when we're disconnected from the source. It's when our mind and all those flurry of thoughts and our emotions and our senses, that they're disconnected from pure consciousness, that most settled state of our own awareness. Therefore, that's the most important thing for us to do twice daily transcendental meditation. Exercise, early morning exercise is wonderful for everyone because after sleeping in the night, the body is a little bit more stiff, etc. We need that early morning exercise to do before 10, but also especially in summer and especially to avoid pitter imbalance because it's going to be cooling. So if you're anywhere near a garden, if you're anywhere near a lake or an ocean or a stream or a forest or uh, a woods, somewhere walking in nature, something like that early in the morning, or your yoga, things like this, ideal so that we're not getting overheated. And then, of course, our work and study and whatever we're doing during the day, main meal of the day at lunch. And as Mark said, take the time. Don't just gulp it down because of the fact that you're so busy with the next project and multitask spending your whole time more on the phone and doing other things rather than enjoying one of the great pleasures in life, which is food, which pitters enjoy. But they also like to be so efficient that they eat too quickly. Afternoon, of course, is a time for us to work or school or whatever. Then, uh, then obviously, uh, late afternoon is a time to refresh ourselves by transcending, having our TM in the late afternoon to remove that stress and fatigue, any emotional stress and fatigue. And then the evening, we have an earlier, lighter, but sufficient dinner. We want it to be early, uh, lighter in quantity, but at the same time, not so little in the way of dinner that we wake up hungry, which is possible, especially if you're pitta. And then to wind down, the worst thing in the world is for you to be doing too much at night, too much stimulating activity, uh, too much focus, 
work, trying to play catch up for all the things that you didn't get to do that day. No, wind down. Take time out to do something like listen to some music, prepare for the next day or whatever, but wind down. And one of our great secrets is definitely before we go to sleep, or oh, one other thing, something very, very cooling could be actually going for a walk in the moon, the moonlight. Mm -hmm. We know that there's sunbathing, which is too hot, which is why I don't want anyone in our pitta audience doing too much in that hot, fiery period during the day. But going for a walk, sometimes Mark and I may go out uh, half an hour, three quarters of an hour after dinner and have a little stroll for 15 minutes in summer in that cool moonlight. It's so nourishing. Lunar light is the more feminine. We need that. Then top of my picks is deep rest. Mark and I take our deep rest an hour before we sleep and because we are pitta predominant and we do tend to get that, you know, overheated in summer, and therefore, to have that wonderful sleep all night, that is our great secret. Having maybe a little bit of coconut oil on our feet before we go to bed um, or a coconut oil massage at some stage during the day or um, pitta massage oil is wonderful as well. And so that's it for the daily routine. How about a few lifestyle tips? The main picture here is this. Circuit breakers. What do I mean circuit breakers? I mean chill. That's what I mean. If that pitter is imbalanced in you and you're het up and hot up and you working to these time pressures and uh, getting things done and schedules and all the rest, realise that this is another important reason for you to be in balance and well rested so that that doesn't stress you later. Everyone needs when we're talking about the lifestyle to have more fun and by that I recommend to people as does my husband and that we do watch a fun movie we are extremely serious about pitters not being serious very serious so circuit breaker fun Maybe you'd like to on the, go out dancing. Maybe listen to some uplifting music, something that's beautiful, that's artistic. How about having some beautiful flowers in your home? Yes, something that's creative, something that's uplifting, some that's fun. Don't surround yourself perhaps by people that are angry and antagonistic. We really need to cool and to sweeten our lives and as I said before, so chill, um, have fun, make time in your day for leisure, something in that day more for leisure and for breaking that intensity which happens with Peter and Balance. Of course, we could have five million other recommendations, but on with the show. And um, maybe it could be time. Uh, any questions? Yeah, let's get to some questions. I know we have, we've had quite a few coming in and uh, you've done a great job though of answering a lot that, that we've seen already. So here's one. Um, heartburn flares up in the summertime predominantly. What foods should be avoided? Well, I think we covered that very clearly yeah. that foods can be very cooling or heating. And so, as I said, Pitters should avoid their hot, spicy foods. Stay away from the chili, the cayenne. If you do get that acidity, for your convenience, there is a wonderful product from Muppy <laughs> called uh, Acid Balance. So we would say the goal in Ayurveda is not to stop the production of acid. It's about having balanced acid production. And so if we're eating a lot of hot, spicy foods or even hot emotions mm -hmm. can actually disturb the digestive function and make the feeling more burning here or acidity coming up, heartburn. is not an uncommon problem in our culture. So acid balance contains things like amla and licorice and saltpeter, a little bit of ginger and cumin. These are very cooling spices. They won't disturb the digestive fire, but they will cool it down so that it functions in a balanced way. So as I said, stick with the cooling foods. But if, you, if it's still not enough for your convenience, Assi Balance is available from Marashi products. That's a great product too. We were just 
talking about how much we love that in a staff meeting the other day. It's, yes, it's, it's really using a lot in my practice too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, so you touched on irritability, which we we know is a is a can be a pizza tendency. But so why do we feel or yeah, in the summertime we're traveling, we're road tripping, we're on you know on the road and traffic wherever it is, and you start to feel really irritable. So is that is that just the symptoms of pizza right there? It's a great question, and again, it just I, I think that we um, have, have mentioned this before, which we have, and so this is great because the audience is identifying with this. I would recommend uh, the things that have, we've mentioned already with our diet and daily routine and the cooling drinks, but I haven't mentioned um, stress-free emotions. So this, exactly as we're saying, this is a normal thing, meaning it's identified it's a pitter imbalance. So stress-free emotions is remarkable. And this is something that you go by the, the label. Uh, you can take one to two stress-free emotions first thing in the morning on an empty stomach and then maybe late afternoon or even evening before bed if you wanted to because it, in addition to all the other recommendations that we've made today, really smooths things out. It's an exquisite, I really mean that, an exquisite synergy of herbs. My favourite being Arjuna, which is a legendary Ayurvedic herb, which just nourishes and soothes and cools the heart, really nourishing it so that we just... It's much, we become as cool as a cucumber and that we're more resilient to other things that would normally leave us hot and bothered. <laughs> oh, give some stress-free emotion. Sounds really good. <laughs> I've, got your, I've got your little sample soon. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a favourite around our office as well. Yes. <laughs> now, what is... I, I, a bit of pizza going on in the office there. <laughs> I mean, we get a lot done, you know, we're, we're fiery. Yeah, <laughs> we're there, we're there. <laughs> yeah, you, you both have been in the office, you know, you know what's happening around there. There's dynamism. <laughs> there is, yeah. We're grateful for it uh, with a lot of stress-free emotions. Um, <laughs> all right, so someone asked, what does Ayurveda recommend for digestion that feels heated or it could even feel irritable? Well, we mentioned this, the... Um, the assi balance but other products you can also use is, is the drinks that we mentioned so you know make some cucumber juice or watermelon juice but not in large amounts just a little bit use it as medicine and then like a lassi a lassi is a yogurt drink and a delicious lassi to make in the afternoon is one part yogurt to three parts water and put some mapri product called rose petal jam in it rose petal spread Roses in Ayurveda are, are tr traditionally and uh, used for the heart. You know, that's why often we give roses on Valentine's Day because it's really good for the heart. And so roses are cooling and nourishing. And rose petal jam is legendary for cooling pitta down. But it's also delicious. So a little bit of rose water, a little bit of cardamom and some rose petal jam in, in some uh, yogurt and water is a really delicious and cooling drink. So apart from the assi balance and, and other things that we can use, that's a very good product. It will help keep you cool and keep your tummy under control, as well as, I said, staying away from hot spicy food. I'm glad that you mentioned the rose, too. We often recommend digestone, which is triphala. And um, Dr. Tumi, could you speak to the triphala plus? It has the cabbage rose in it. Uh, so triphala is a traditional Ayurvedic product, very legendary. Basically, you can buy it anywhere now. And the reason is because it's so effective at what it does, and that is it tones the digestive tract. Triphala tr means try as in three, phala as in the fruits. Amalaki, bibitaki, harataki. Each one by itself is legendary, but when you combine it, you get this wonderful synergy of nourishing, um, balancing, toning, uh, digesting uh, herbs but it can be a little heating and drying for some people so mapias put a little bit of cabbage rose in it to make it a bit more digestible for pitters just soothing that out a little bit cooling it down a little bit 
it's a little more tridoshic, we might say, the digestone or trifle plus rose by itself. But a wonderful product. You, so I tell people it's good for so many things. Very good for the eyes and the skin and the heart and the liver. It makes sure you have good elimination every day. It's something you can take your whole life and be very happy with. Mm. Okay, and then someone asks, should I try a different workout or workout routine in summer versus the spring and the winter? It's a fabulous question. And as I say this, uh, Mark, I'm drinking my pitta tea, my nappy <laughs> pitta tea. Um, would you like some, darling? I've got my rose water. So while we're talking about the workout, we've got some hot lights here. So I'm just having a little bit of my spray, darling. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> we've got rose here everywhere because, as you say, it's absolutely legendary, soothing, nourishing and all the rest. Different workout for summer. What, what an intelligent question. What an intelligent question. Ayurveda is about respect. Respect for ourself, respect for our nature being one with nature's nature, respect for the season. Instead of doing hot yoga, which I know many people do during the year, summer in general is not a time to be doing hot yoga. It's not a time to be doing, um, uh, you know, playing a really combative, competitive uh, four-person uh, tennis match, you know, right in the middle of the day. I see it. I'll never forget in Australia, mind you, I've seen it in New York, I've seen people come out of their offices and go for a lunchtime run <laughs> across a metal bridge in New York, a famous one, and in Sydney at midday in amongst the putrid traffic and it's like 105 degrees. This is cruel to our body. It's just going to create real imbalance. Fabulous question. And that is, is this, we don't push ourselves. If we're going to, if we push, you know that old saying, and that is no pain, no gain. Mm -hmm. That type of thing with exercise that you've got to keep, you've got to keep, you know, straining and, that's not the way that it should be. Exercise should be that which is wonderful for the mind and the body, which should not leave us exhausted, not leave us, you know, profusely sweating in summer. For kapha, that's a different matter. They need to do more robust exercise, a little bit more perspiration. That type of thing is good for them with their kapha imbalance. But for pitta, we don't, we don't push listen to the body, try and have that early morning exercise, more swimming, more cooling, these types of activities in nature, or if you want to be doing other things, maybe inside where it's cool. So very important, but ultimately don't push. Mm. Chill, take it easy, and don't strain. Mm. Nice. Nice. Okay. And then one last question here, which is getting back to the eyes, which we've touched on a couple of times today, but somebody says, my eyes feel dry and itchy in the summer, especially. Is this common? It is common. Remember I said at the beginning, the seat of pitta in the head is the eyes. Mm -hmm. So these, what converts light into something useful that we can see, a low chuck pitta, that aspect of pitta that governs the transformation of light or the inner light or the outer light into something useful. So eye problems I deal with a lot and it, a lot of it has to do with people, we would say, disrespecting their eyes. So for instance, I get a lot of IT people, they spend like nine hours in front of a computer. And you know what it's like when you work in kind of front of a computer, you forget about everything around you except what's on the computer. You can sit there for four or five hours and not doing anything other than looking at the computer. And that really, we would say, cooks the eyes, you know, the electromagnetic energy, the light from the computer, the heat that's built up from thinking and looking, it really disturbs the eyes. And so often uh, it's a pitta imbalance and there are a lot of eye problems around now. You see this glaucoma where the pressure builds up in the eyes. It's a bit like a, a pressure cooker. When you're cooking the inner ingredients, it builds up pressure, but Unfortunately, the eyes don't have a little valve to let off that pressure. So it's the heat that builds up in the eyes. And macular degeneration is becoming a large problem where the macula 
is degenerated because of too much heat or dryness in the eyes. So it's all about maintaining the balance of pitta and cooling it down. But there are some strategies apart from eating the right food and, and as Helen said, having the right daily routine. There are some things that are very good for cooling the eyes. One, of course, is my best friend, rose water spray. <laughs> I mean, any IT person who's seen me has a bottle of this by their computer. And one is they look at it and they go, all right, if I don't do this, Mark is going to get really pitter at So basically it's very sure. cooling for the eyes. You just look up at the ceiling and spray your face and eyes, let a little water spray into the eyes. Rose water spray, very cooling for the eyes and pitter. Mm. If your eyes are getting heated naturally, a good old trick is to keep a cold cucumber in the refrigerator, make some slices, lie back and put it on your eyes. Very, very cooling. Another trick is to put a little bit of ghee on your eyelids at night. Ghee is very cooling. And a little bit of ghee on the eyelids at night takes that heat out at night while you sleep. Um, cool. Marishi has a product called Amla Berry. It's a very special product that's very, very toning and, and balancing to the eyes. And very, we would say, chakshus means to nourish the eyes. It's a very famous herb for the eyes. So. Amla berry, rose petal jam, rose water, you know, ghee on the eyes, things that cool the eyes and always have a break. If you're on the computer, make sure that you have a break at least every 40 minutes. Get up, stretch, drink some pit of tea, spray your face with some rose water, you know, have something to drink like some pit of tea, as I said. Hydration is very important for the eyes as well. Mm. And to have that break, give the eyes a break, give them a little massage. Mm -hmm. So those type of things will really help with that problem. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to ask a question. Since we have you here and you're the expert on Panchakarma, mm -hmm. um, I, I remember at, when I was at the Raj hearing about one of the treatments that you do that's for, I, I believe that it was geared towards people that spend a lot of time on computers. Is, mm -hmm. What is that treatment about? Could you, could you share with us? Well, there's a couple of treatments. Okay. One is um, it's a... It's a massage, a particular type of massage given us to by a Vija, and it really helps protect the body from electromagnetic fields and energy. And often, you know, if there's more pitta, we will use an oil like coconut oil, special herbalized coconut oils like a malaki coconut, and we'll do that special massage. The sense of touch is very powerful in terms of helping to protect the body from anything negative. For instance, let's say we're upset, we've had a stressful day, and we come home to a loved one, and they give us this wonderful hug and say, it's going to be all right. I mean, how powerful is that sense of touch? You know, when we're disturbed at night and the brain is racing, we feel hot, and someone gives us a nice coconut oil massage of our feet, it immediately settles us down. That sense of touch is very powerful, and it really helps strengthen the electromagnetic energy of the body. You know, if you looked at the electromagnetic fields created from the heart, it actually comes out about three feet from the body. So the heart is a very powerful electrical field creator. And of course, we're always mixing that with other people and other uh, fields. So it's very soothing for the heart as well. So th that massage is very powerful. The other thing is there's a special treatment for the eyes where we we make these special donuts that look like big Elton John sunglasses <laughs> and then we fill them up with ghee and oh. you look up through these beautiful, wonderful ghee light and it takes Golden. all that pitta out of the eyes. Beautiful. Wow. So these are wonderful treatments for the eyes and pitta in general. But in general for pitta people, they have to be very careful with the eyes because they in intense, they tend to focus intensely. And if, of course, with the invention of computers, it sort of leads to more imbalance in the eyes and leads to you really need to be more aware and take care of those precious sensory organs. Mm -hmm. Makes so much sense. So we can provide some links in um, along with this webinar for information on the Raj. So if anyone's interested in those treatments, they can come and see you. Oh, wonderful. Okay. All right. So I, this is such great information for all of us and such inspiring thoughts. So I'd like to get any final insights from the two of you that you'd like to share. 
Um, one, one very, very small thing, and that is, is the fact that also, let alone the rose water and all the rest for the eyes, if for any reason you don't have any of that near you, if the hands are washed, you know, so they're nice and clean, and just even some fresh, cool water, purified water, that also can be splashed and, you understand, cool the eyes down. Mm -hmm. So that's really important as well. Um, I'd like to also say that colours and things like this are also important. I tend to wear stronger, more passionate reds and, and those types of colours in winter to warm me. But today, as you can see, my husband's wearing a cooling blue. I've got the pinks, even the jewellery that we wear, even a man, you know, gold is more heating, silver is more cooling, pearls are cooling, crystal is cooling, colours are cooling. So all these different things, we just don't digest, digest and metabolise food. We metabolise everything through our senses. That's why this has also been such a sensory experience, hasn't it, to, today, all together, learning all this wonderful information. But the next thing is, is this, is the fact that Mark and I feel very, very passionately about the fact that being a couple and actually having some knowledge of Ayurveda having invested so much of our lives in learning about these principles, we feel very, 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 very keenly that we really want anyone that's watching, watching these programs that MAPI has to share some of these Ayurvedic tips with their family, with their friends, with their partner, because we understand that if we're angry and intense and out of balance, then what that's going to lead to is it's going to lead to an imbalance and it's going to lead to anger and it's going to lead to tension and stress and the exact opposite of peace and harmony in our world. So as a couple, because we understand Ayurveda and because we respect that we have so much pitta, dosha, in both of us, we're really, really sympathetic and empathetic knowing certain things to nourish one another and never, ever to be speaking sharply. Understanding Pitta is just that sensitive time. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give a beautiful rose to the love of my life oh. because he's so sweet. And I'm going to say from both of us to everybody, individually and collectively, that we hope that you have a loving cooling, calming, soothing, sweet, breezy, easy peasy summer and we love you. And this one's for you, Val, and oh. to uh, for our audience. Oh. Enjoy, because that's why we're here. As I always say, a balanced pitta will conquer the world, but the key word is balanced. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you both so much for being here and for sharing your insights with us. I really hope that we can get you back so we could tackle Vata and also Kapha with you as well, because this is so informative. Yeah, if we can catch a Vata, we'll balance him. <laughs> or, or if we can get out of the water and off our sur surfboards. Because <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in as well. We always appreciate your feedback and all of the insights that you have to share with us as well. So thanks for tuning in. We hope you join us again for another webinar. Take care.